everyone. So pretty unsurprisingly, I've been reading a lot of books in 2020. Not as many as I have in previous years, for a few reasons, we can get into that. But enough to recommend some really, really excellent books. So today I want to share with you the best 10 books that I read in 2020. They weren't published in 2020, but they're the best ones that I read this year. I'm going to split my recommendations evenly between fiction and nonfiction, so there should be something for everyone, and they're in no real particular order. It's kind of hard to weigh books against one another, but I do know an excellent book when I see one, and I hope that you're going to be able to find one in this video that you will absolutely love. And if you want to check out any of them, I've linked them all in my description. Everything should be timestamped. You should be good to go. So without further ado, here are my top five fiction books that I read in 2020. I read more fiction in 2020 than I think in any previous year of my life. And that might be a little bit surprising to you if you've been following the channel for a while and you had seen my 2020 book list, the books that I was planning to read in 2020. They were really heavy. And when coronavirus hit and the world kind of became very chaotic as a result and pretty dark, um, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really in the headspace to be reading those books, frankly. And I think it's important that you're reading the books that you are in the headspace for and not just kind of forcing yourself to read for the sake of reading, right? Reading is supposed to be enjoyable. It's supposed to be fun. And it is when you're reading the right books. And so a lot of the books that I read this year were fiction and some of them were amazing. All right, so the first book that I'm gonna recommend, and it's a classic, I've butchered this name before uh, in, in another video and I, I got roasted for it. Uh, it's Don Quixote. Now this book is a bit of a commitment. It was a thousand pages, the copy that I had, but it's so worth it. It is such a fantastic escape into a world of fantasy. But it's not your traditional fantasy book. It's a tongue in cheek, hilarious fantasy book. It's the type of book that makes you laugh while reading, which is not something that I've personally experienced with many books. This is really a book that I think everyone should have on their shelf. It's so re-readable. It is such a fantastic work that you get more out of as you slow down and as you read it more. In fact, I do plan on rereading it because I kind of rushed through it the first time, but even in rushing through it, I had such a fun time reading this book. It's such a fun read. So the second book I'll recommend was actually from the same video, the video where I was reading all of the books that Joe from the Netflix series You recommended, and it's The Count of Monte Cristo. Now, I read an actually abridged version of this, which I think was a good move. I've heard that the unabridged version uh, has a lot of dialogue and a lot of really slow pace. I didn't notice because I read the abridged version, so I can't really comment on that. But this is just such an interesting arc. I think it probably has one of the most interesting character arcs in any fiction book that I've ever read, really. If I had to pick a modern book to compare this to, it'd be The Great Gatsby. It has this same kind of redemption-esque quality to it, which I just find so enthralling. I just think it's such an easy book to, to put yourself in the character's shoes and to imagine these wrongs being done to you and then overcoming it. I think it's a classic story. I really recommend it. Okay, so this next one is probably my favorite sci-fi book of all time. And I've read a lot of sci-fi. I'm, I'm a big sci-fi buff. Uh, and, and the book that I'm talking about is Dune. Now, I've actually now read and listened to the whole Dune series, um, or at least the six book series. I know there's a lot more. I've read the core six, and I might be reading more in the universe. Uh, but the original Dune is just unparalleled in its mastery of every sci-fi element that I personally appreciate. So you have this interesting mystical element. You have this beautiful kind of alien world and, and this setting of humanity in the interstellar era. And it mixes old and new so well. Like you have these fantasy elements of like sword play and sword fighting in a world where you have laser guns and interstellar travel. And if you're going to be picking up a sci-fi book in 2021, this might be a really good one because there's actually a feature film of Dune coming out in the later part of 2021 with some pretty heavy hitters on the production and in the cast. And from what I've seen, at least the preview, the trailer, looks pretty good. So I definitely recommend reading before you watch that movie uh, because it's just such, such a fantastic piece of sci-fi. Okay, so the next book that I'm gonna recommend is Foundation. And it has a lot of similarities to Dune, actually. It's sci-fi, it's the beginning of an amazing series. And you also see some kind of elements of old mixed with new here. Although this is definitely, uh, this is definitely more kind of futurist, I would say, than Dune. But again, you have this kind of interstellar travel. You have these highly technologized societies, which I just find really compelling when done well. 
And I would say that, that both Dune and Foundation do these very well. And the series are also fantastic. So it's not just kind of a one-off. If you enjoy it, you can pick up the next one and the next one and the next one. Really recommend both of these books. So the fifth fiction book that I'm gonna recommend is actually probably best characterized as nonfiction. In fact, I just looked it up. It is technically nonfiction. But it reads like fiction, it reads like narrative, and that's why I've included it here. And it's Into the Wilds, which a lot of people might have read already, but I hadn't read until this year. And it's this interesting, this fascinating story about a young man uh, named Chris McCandless who goes into the wilds. He leaves behind school, he leaves behind his family, and he goes and he makes it eventually to Alaska, where he unfortunately meets his death. And it's this story, though, of a, of a young person trying to find their place in the world in many ways. It's a very relatable story, I think, for a lot of young adults. So technically, maybe this should be under nonfiction, but I wanted to include it under fiction because I read it like it was a fiction book. I wasn't reading to learn. I was reading because of the story. All right, so now on to nonfiction, which is what I generally read more of compared to fiction. Although 2020 was pretty even, like I said, because of coronavirus where my head was at. Now, the first book that I'm gonna recommend is one that I actually read in 2019, though I reread it this year. It's Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. So I actually did a YouTube booktube piece uh, on the YouTube Originals channel talking to Brian Stevenson about Just Mercy in 2019. And Brian Stevenson, for those of you who don't know, is a lawyer who went down after going to Harvard Law School to Montgomery, Alabama, where he worked to get prisoners off of death row. Now since then, his organization, Equal Justice Initiative, has done all sorts of other things. Uh, including getting children off of uh, life sentences and very extreme sentences and so on. His story in Just Mercy is incredibly powerful. And there was a movie that was made about it in 2020 that was released at the beginning of the year, which has Michael B. Jordan playing Brian Stevenson, which is also great. So it's another book that you can read and then watch the movie. And I highly recommend it as a dive into uh, the history of racism in the American justice system. Okay, so the second nonfiction book that I read this year that I'm going to recommend is Capital in the 21st Century by Thomas Piketty. Capital in the 21st Century is fundamentally a book about inequality, wealth and income inequality in Europe and in the United States. And it is such an interesting read because it takes a very unique approach when compared to what a lot of people talk about with inequality and its roots and its effects. Uh, and so Piketty has a really interesting way of analyzing inequality, I think, uh, and its roots and, and where it's going. And I think it's, it's worthy of a read. I think if you're someone who's interested in economics, and in particular if you're interested in inequality and where wealth inequality will take us, this is a book that's worth a read. So the next book is one that I've actually recently gotten into. It's How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. And this is a book about psychedelics. But it's not about psychedelics from a recreational perspective so much as from a health perspective and from a spiritual perspective. It looks at this long, long history that psychedelics have played in traditional medicine and in traditional uh, religions and spirituality. And then it looks at this criminalization that happened in America and how uh, psilocybin and other psychedelics were classified uh, as these class one narcotics. And that stopped all of this research that was being done. And now there's kind of a renaissance happening of this research. And we're seeing psilocybin being used as an antidepressant, MDMA being used for PTSD, etc. And so it's really fascinating to think about the application of these substances, which I think a lot of people think about as primarily party drugs, recreational, and to look at them from this perspective of no, when used properly, if used properly, these can actually be medicine. Pollan does a really interesting job of, of breaking this down in the book. Uh, it's a well, well written with a lot of personal experience as well. And I, I recommend that, that you check it out too. All right, so the fourth book that I'm gonna recommend is a classic from the 20th century. It's the Gulag Archipelago. This is not a light book. This is one that I got into as I got out of my kind of the, the lows of, of lockdown. Uh, I don't recommend it if you're in, if you're in a low place um, because it is depressing, it is sad, it is heartbreaking, and it's a look into the very worst of what humanity can do to itself. It's this look inside the Soviet Union in the, in the early days, uh, in this, this era of 
sending people away and disappearing people. And it's a look into humanity through that lens, which is, I think, a lens that I personally have never experienced. I've never experienced anything truly hard in my life. And so seeing and hearing a world like that, I think is, is one of the, the most powerful things that a book can give to you. And so it's kind of this sober and really hard to read at times book, you know, outlining all of these crazy things that were happening. Um, and in trying to understand how things got to that place, what does it mean that humanity can do this to itself? It's a book that, that made me think a lot. Okay, now the final nonfiction book that I read this year that I'll recommend is A Study of History. Now I read the abridged version. The original is uh, by Toynbee. I can't remember exactly who did the abridging, but it's volumes one through six, I believe. Um, it, even though it's abridged, it is hefty, hard to get through. But it's essentially a study of civilization as we knew it when Toynbee wrote this, which was a while ago now. There's some outdated stuff in this. Uh, there's some pretty rough scholarship in there at points. But in general, this book is a really interesting work in that it finds certain patterns in human civilizations and shows how these show up again and again and again. And it points to these qualities of society that I personally had not thought about before because truthfully, my history is pretty shoddy. You know, I have what I learned in high school, I took a couple of history classes in college, but other than that, I turned to books for a lot of history. And I, I think history is a very important subject. And in particular, I think the history of civilization is a really important subject. Uh, and so this book is, is a hard one to get through. It's not, it's not light reading, it's not exactly dark, but it does make you think about modern society in a different way. And I like that. I like when books make me look at the world around me slightly differently. I wanna thank Audible for sponsoring this video. I've had my Audible account now for coming up on three years, and for every month in those three years, I've listened to at least one audiobook through Audible, and it's never let me down. Audible has the largest collection of audiobooks in the world, and now through the Plus catalog, members have access to even more content, things like guided meditations, guided exercise sessions, podcasts, and more. Recently, I've been on a bit of an Isaac Asimov kick, and I just wrapped up listening to Nemesis, which I thought was really cool. So if you're into sci-fi, if you're into space especially, I highly recommend that you give it a listen. The thing that I appreciate the most about Audible is that the quality is just so high, so you really know that you're gonna have a good experience going into whatever it is that you wanna listen to. You can start listening for free today with a 30-day Audible trial if you go to audible.com slash johnfish or text johnfish to 500-500. This will get you one audiobook and full access to the Plus catalog absolutely free. That's audible.com slash johnfish or text johnfish to 500-500. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you found a book that you're really excited to, to read, to listen to, to consume however you want to consume and I hope that you really enjoy it. As school is beginning to wind down and we're getting into the holiday season, I really can't think of a better time to be picking up books and to be picking up reading as a habit. So maybe a good idea. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe if you did. Feel free to like, and I'll see you again soon.